I like to do things um, also. I think it's not just about practical application, but it is also uh, to a large extent about understanding oneself. And um, the beauty about Jyotish, as Akshat said, it's a Vedanga, one of the six Vedangas is that it is will appeal to people of all ages, whether you're old. I mean, there are clients who have come to me and they are just interested in whether they will get moksha, whether they will find this, you know, and so spiritual journey. There are people who come to me with other problems, you know, so it's caters literally to a wide repertoire of people of all ages. So it's up to you to pick and choose. But one thing is certain, the whole common factor of which is uniting Jyotish and the Vedangas and the whole quest for knowledge is to do with human suffering. You know, why are we here even? Why are we even bothering? You know, um, is Bhagwan? how can he permit all this? Because let's face it, we are in Mrityu Loka, okay? Uh, Mrityu Loka meaning we have a limited shelf life. So no matter what, no one is a god. Even the best of yogis, um, you know, like um, Devra Baba who lived here, we don't know how many years he lived, maybe like 100, 200, 300 um, uh, we don't know, okay? But even they, it, once they enter the realm of Bhuloka, which is our earth, um, it is, there is already an expiry date written on you. So you have to exit this and hence it's called the Mrityu Loka. So what is it about this Loka where even Sri Ram who came had to pass away and go into you know, obviously they are the avatars and as Krishna, Lord Krishna, but what is it about them that even they had to fight all the demons and so on and so forth? So we will see, okay? And uh, which reminds me of Vasudeva Sutam Devam uh, Kamsa Chanur Mardanam. This is from the Dhyana Shloka of the Gita, Devaki Paramanandam. Krishnam Vande Jagat Guru. So let's move forward. Um, so basically one of the big factors is karma, okay? Um, now, we may often wonder why we gravitate towards people who are like very different, you know, even in relationships. And in fact, the karma plays out mainly in relationships to a huge degree. Maybe we feel it more. It's like people born in two different parts of the earth and yet they are married. And then you find that after like 10 years or 25 years, they separate or it's still not the same. So what is it about the relationship? That is it the karma is over? What is it? You know, so the word karma, uh, obviously karma comes from the Sanskrit etymological. Uh, if you go back, it's karma. And of course, we have various kinds of karma. Um, it is, uh, it operates as the law of cause and effect, action, reaction. And all of this karma binds the core concept which in Vedanta we know as Atman. It The self or the soul um, is a sort of a, like a shoddy description of Atma or Atman, you know, and it, and this Atman is literally caged within our rib cage, you know, like within all the, uh, uh, within our, um, the soul resides there and it can't get out. It's like the cage it's like the shackles, it's like the bandhana of uh, Saturn, Shani. And it is like the samsara and it is attached. So it's like a whole time and space and is moving forward, the births and deaths and multiple lifetimes. It's like uh, there is a, a reference to Lord Brahma that in a blink of an eye, some millions of lifetimes pass through in front of Brahma's eyes. So you know, so that gives you a very uh, clear indication that karma, that is why we are carrying on coming here because we haven't been able to grasp the full picture. So what is the full picture? And the full picture is various karmas that we have accumulated 
over ages and ages, you know, like uh, all the time. And in Jyotish, that, that is the beauty about Jyotish. We are able to pinpoint what you were in the previous lifetime, immediate previous lifetime, what you were like many lifetimes. And, you know, there are Varga charts which give us various accumulated karmas. Eighth house, as Akshat just mentioned, is like will give you in-depth about what the karma is it has associations with your lagna law it has associations with your atma karaka which i will come to in a bit we've already cons uh, you know the atma is already we figured out a uh, kind of you know we are all familiar with the word atma so all of that has a bearing on the various kind of sanchita karmas prarabdha karma of course some karma you can say there are people who are like for example ill for a, like 30 years and then suddenly they wake up and they are like all right you know they feel good so what is that what is that part of the sanchita karma what what is that prarabdha that they had to go through that experience of ill health for that many decades or that many years and then they are able to come out of it what is it so this understanding and sometimes it is just the understanding we see and our attitude and the way we deal with our karma and our perspective our perception will have a huge huge impact on our ongoing karmas which is the agama karma which is we are carrying on making just breathing and putting our foot on earth and putting our foot on the grass you know killing all those little minute insects is creating that ongoing agama karma so what to say about like you know all our lifestyle all the um uh you know the the carbon blueprint or footprint or whatever we are uh, constantly creating by consuming and consuming and overeating and you know all of that so there is all of this all adds up to us the agama karma so you see the vedas are there are probably even six uh, very well defined uh classifications of karma and so four of them, as you can see, Kriya Mana is like where you're, it's being made. And Agama is like you get the result of it instantly. So if you've been like horrible to somebody or, uh, you know, uh, or stolen from somebody and, you know, and thought, oh, it's fine. And then suddenly you find that, hey, you, you're, you've got mugged down the road a few years down the road. So that's kind of like it comes in and it's gone you know, because it's pretty immediate. So all of these are, you know, very much ongoing process. And karma is a very complex process. Everybody likes to say, oh, it's karma. That's why I'm having this. No, it, the karma is very complex. It is not a very straightforward uh, uh, kind of, because you don't know. Everything may be going well. You may be happy. Everything, you've got a good marriage. You've got children. You've got a nice house. Everything is great. But it's that one thing. Something will come and trigger and all. It's like a pack of cards. Everything will just come crashing down. So what is it? What is it? Is it like some karma has borne fruit, which in some nth lifetime you did not know and suddenly it has come to rule over here. So, you know, that's why it said it's very complex and uh, we never know what may come. Anyway, so this is from Parashara's um, text, right? That the Grahas, Parashara, the uh, huge, huge monumental work of uh, Muni Parashara, which is um brihat parashara hora shastra and it says um chapter two that the grahas incarnate as a succession of eminent births whose purpose is to destroy the strength of demons enhance the strength of gods to re-establish dharma so there we go so we now have some kind of a blueprint we have some kind of like a uh way forward and i haven't said it it's parashara who's saying it and this was established thousands of years ago so you know um and so there is a certain uh purpose and a certain goal you know like a higher goal 
and everything else like oh i want a better car a better job a better everything better lifestyle i want to be uh, i want to get an invite to um, the richest person's uh, wedding in town <laughs> you know all of these are just here and gone tomorrow but there is also a bigger picture which is ever it's like the churning of the wheel you know like the samsara the wheels of samsara there is something else that is churning way way beyond your reach and that is the understanding that this concept of pursuing your or reestablishing the dharma which has fallen in this kali yuga now th there is like i said there are so many this is a vast subject it's a proper vedanga so i will not do we will do in the next session about the yugas and all that i have tackled this in one of the ayodhya conferences um, but i will probably go in depth on the yugas so i will not go into too much into the yugas at this point but uh, parashara continues with his um, you know the vamana is sorry uh, oops i think got the wrong sliding here yeah so basically, uh, hang on, yeah. So before we come to that, um, let's have a look at this particular story, okay? The Mount Kailash. There is, and what is happening or what happened in Mount Kailash and why the whole of the Jyotish and as Parashara says, um, you know, 